Hi guys and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. It's October 13th, 2017. You can bet any chance I get to break my format on the Texas Fly Fishing Report, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And today's the case. Right now you're watching a slideshow of images I shot last week while in Rockport and Port Aransas and Aransas Pass, Texas. This is a part of a story I did for Drake Magazine, I did both manuscript and photographs. It's about Clyde. It's their car that they have that runs all over the country. And basically, uh, Drake Magazine, through a column and every single issue for about 10 years now, has followed the adventures of Clyde the car. The drivers for the car last uh, the last few weeks, and you can still find the car in Houston, Texas at Bayou City Angler. Drivers who helped me out greatly were Danny and Dylan. And you can get a hold of them at Bayou City Angler, www.bayoucityangler.com. While I was there, I had some great interviews with some uh, captains there. And I want to thank these guys as the slideshow runs. Captain Chuck Nazer, chucknazer.com. Ken Jones, kenjofly.com. Also, Captain, all these guys are Captain. William Townsend, lightandfly.com. Captain William Townsend, very, very good. And then there was Dave Hayward at Swan Point Landing Orvis. Uh, kind of gave us a, a rundown on how things are still still hanging on there. Uh, that area really got hit. And, of course, right now the whole situation down there really dominates my thoughts. Uh, we did get out. Let me just tell you right now, one way you can support those folks down there is by booking trips. I know the infrastructure is really, really bad off, but there's still a... Uh, Ways I, I slept on the beach actually while I was there, so I would sleep on the beach at night and then go do the story during the day, and then uh, maybe fish the jetties and sleep at night. And there was no one else there uh, on the beach in the public area besides me, and uh, a lot of DPS and a lot of cops running around. And um, it's basically a war zone slash disaster area, and so don't be surprised with the the level of scrutiny you get there. Uh, let me go back now. There's there's also one other website I want you to check. It's called flatsworthy.com. That's a Chuck Nazer creation, of, and it's charged with protecting the flats down there because there are a lot of um, different forces coming to bear on the flats down there causing problems, and also now with the uh, the uh, shallow water flats guides coming up with solutions. So that's it's a very interesting uh situation it's going to get a lot more of my time for sure in the future and just make sure that you check out flatsworthy.com and join you don't have to be there to join just join up that contributes to the cause and it helps greatly as far as local fishing goes it's been uh, the conversion now from summer into fall we have northers coming in what we call northers here what you guys elsewhere in the country might call cool fronts and they come in, they probably blow through in 24 hours or less, and then we have a day of mild weather, bluebird weather, followed by the reversal where the south winds blow. So right now we had a cool front come in a few days ago, another one coming in uh, tomorrow or the next day, and it really throws all the freshwater lake fishing into a, basically an un unpredictability. Um, I tried to do something predictable yesterday and got stomped on pretty good. So I'd, I'd say, you know, the transition is on into fall now. We needed to settle into cool fronts without the blowback from the south to be able to start in with new fall patterns. Of course, the whole thing with uh, carp is over for the season now, and I like to go look for uh, situations like largemouth bass and chain pickerel in East Texas and uh, rainbow trout, maybe some brown trout in Oklahoma. So that's what we're going towards now, moving away from the warm water fish, warm weather fish. And so things are changing. It's more difficult. I'd much rather go to the coast, of course. Any chance I get, I'll probably be in Houston next week, and we'll see what happens there. When it comes to news that's noteworthy to fly fishing, Probably the biggest thing that's happened in the last 10 days is the re-deregulation of, of coal-fired plants. And that's a big deal. 
because of the pollution that we'll be uh, suffering from again and progressive pollution until uh, people figure out that, that there's no such thing as clean coal. And directly, the, there's one lake in East Texas called Monticello, Monticello, whatever you want to call it. And that is a uh, cooling lake that uh, has been offline as far as I can tell. I mean, I never get anybody really to talk about this place, but because the people I would talk to are guys and they don't want you to know. But um, it's been offline for a while, which means that the warm water infusion that, that actually makes fish concentrate, you can fish there in the snow in the winter. And the water's so warm that steam will come off and, and you can catch bass in concentrated areas. But if it's not running, then it's not, that's not happening. And now, to make the point, uh, they have taken that Monticello offline. It had gone offline just before they announced the, the deregulation. And so that, that lake will be basically regressing back to a normal lake where it's not nearly as uh, it's not nearly going to be nearly as predictable and and the fish will be starting to scatter because of the water will normalize temperatures all the way through and through um you can count on that going on in a lot of places where uh because the obama administration started the ball rolling that these plants basically were putting themselves out of business before this deregulation came along and the places it's going to affect most or the thing that will probably affect most is just the the coal the people who actually dig the coal and uh, then they'll have to figure out where to put it <laughs> but anyway that's my report for this week short and sweet if you've got any information i'd love to hear it of course there's always additional information at www.texasflycaster.com we're going to run the scroll here at the end so you can see what's going on in your area you know of course we're laying off the lakes and, and laying on the salt water um I really encourage you to uh, go to the coast, not as a disaster tourist, but really as a fly fishing person. You can walk right off into the water in a place like Port Aransas, Aransas Pass area, and catch fish. Um, the tides were really off on us, and that's why uh, super high tide during the equinox, and, and it just didn't, you know, we got a lot of water in there. So we caught one redfish the whole time I was there. And we tried really, really hard. So watch the scroll. Let me know if you got anything. www.texasflycaster.com or call me on my phone, 940-380-0408. Or text me. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.